아! And welcome to GT Not Live, where I am still back from London and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, since I have no plans to go back anytime soon. Though I will say, uh, very sad uh, to have left. Uh, we were there for two months, and you know, while we were there, like I think after two months, Steph and I were expecting us to be like, oh, eager to get home, or like antsy, bored, whatever, like homesick. Didn't really happen, actually. There was, it was it was a really nice trip. London's a beautiful city. It's very clean. It's very polite. Like, public transpor transportation's awesome. So, good on you, London. Eager to come back one day. But, uh, for now, it's back on the couch, back filming videos, and back uh, solving the Mandela catalog, apparently. So, you... Ash? So, sorry, I was, I was reflecting back at the one time that I have, I guess two times, because we broke it in two, that we have sat together and solved the Mandela catalog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for those five. <laughs> Sorry, Ash just Bell is, is standing over there. And I, so I was very confused about was the emotions missing. that were passing over their face, the thoughts that were crossing through your head. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, no, all positive stuff. Just like, I don't know. I was thinking about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just reminiscing. Yeah. I mean, the only really painful part was how pale I looked on camera. Oh. Um, you remember that. I do, back then, yeah. When the video got noticeably cooler. Uh-huh, yeah. So in post, yeah. I had to warm up the temperature after I put my hand in. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, it looks like you've gotten a tan, so congratulations. Thank you, uh, Yeah, and I'm glad you were able to see some sunlight. Really? You had to, in the post- <laughs> You're like, you know what? This is the thing that I'm going to really focus on. <laughs> Warming up the tone of my hair. No, not my hand. The, the whole video. The, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just heating the whole thing up. Yeah. The artistic license that is, is happening is, is fascinating over here. Um, <laughs> wow. Speaking of warming up the tones, I, I hope you've noticed my onslaught of yellow that yeah. I've been pumping out since I got back from London. I got, uh, what, four? I think like four pieces of clothing while I was in London. That's why I'm... It's like, it's like when you get new clothes for the new school year or whatever. Yeah. I got a bunch of new clothes. I'm like, oh, I get to wear my new clothes on GT Live. I'm so excited. Uh, all of them, except for the yellow jacket that I wore during Amanda. Um, all of them are from uh, this museum in London called the Tate Modern. Uh, the Tate has a, a couple of different uh, museums in there, but the Tate Modern is actually one of my favorites. Uh, all the museums in London are amazing, but the Tate Modern is full of, as you would guess, modern art. And as with modern art, some of it's good, some of it is not good, uh, but all of it's interesting, right? And I think that's what I like about it is... Regardless of whether or not you think it's art, and we actually played that game with Ollie where we would show him different things mm -hmm. and we would ask him, is this art? Do you think that this is art? Do you Ooh. like this? Do you not like this? You know, what? And, and even if he said no, he didn't like we or no, it's not art, we'd be like, well, what do you like about it? You know, so like yeah. there's merit in everything. Um, but, you know, it, regardless, it gets you to think, right? Like it could be the weirdest thing possible and whether or not you have like a, a reaction to it, it's like, it gets you to think about it, right? Like, do I like this? Is this art? Should this be in a museum? Yeah, I don't know. Um, like, for instance, one of the things that I really loved was this giant tower of radios. All, like, old, new, like, just ages of radios in a giant stack, a giant column, and it filled up almost an entire room, right? And they're all playing different things all at the same time showing you know obviously the, the message is kind of like the the cacophony that we're constantly being inundated with and all the voices and media that we're constantly being like bombarded with i thought it was really cool um you know and i i think that's that's very compelling art um you know and it also speaks to me there was also a concrete block with little concrete pebbles and and dirt inside of it that you would get off of like a construction site. Art? Not art? What do you think, Ash? Art. Yeah, you think art, huh? I think why so. why do you think art? 
because I'm thinking about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's getting you, getting you to feel. Yeah. Concrete. I define art as thought juice. Yeah, sure. Um, That's great. So it's like we got concrete, mm -hmm. little, little dirt, little, little pebble boys. Yeah, little pebble boys. Yeah. It's like I see that and I try to imagine that mm -hmm. in like a construction site. Yeah. Um, cool. So I'm like copy and pasting that. Like, what's around it? Mm -hmm. It looks like it's something that's. I'll, I have. I'm, I haven't seen it. No, of course. But it feels like something that's taken out and put into like a weird environment, which yeah. I also think is part of the art itself. Yeah. No, it. Which and uh, let's talk about that in a second. But like real quick, <laughs> like the the concrete thing. Seeing it, I'm like, ah. But I get the point, right? So the point of it, because I read about it. I'm like, what were they trying to do with this? And the artist was trying to showcase concrete in all its different forms, all in one thing right and so you have like big concrete block as one unit you had like smaller pebbles and you had like little you know little like concrete dust in there and it was all like in one thing and it's like i wanted to get you to think about concrete so there you go like i mean to me i'm like yeah you know womp womp but like like it, i got it but it wasn't like one that i'm like this is great art yeah I think you can have like varying degrees of success with a with a piece too, right? Yeah. One of the things I like about modern art specifically though is you look at the the history of the classical arts, the impressionists and, you know, the oil painters, the portrait artists, you know, landscape artists, these and that. And like you had to be good at painting in order to get across kind of what you wanted to do. I think with modern art, there's such a spectrum in the mediums, what you're using to tell it, this and that, that if you have something to say, you can find a medium that's right for your message in a lot of ways. Why, why, are, you, why are you laughing? <laughs> I like the implication that modern art, you can suck, but as long as you have intention. No, but I mean, like, honestly, like it opens, it, it opens the door to people with creative ideas, mm -hmm. but maybe not the precision or technique to get them across in more traditional ways. Yeah. I see, and, and the reason I say that, right, is I see YouTube in a lot of the same way, right? Where like, mm -hmm. you can have a really cool idea, but you don't have the camera equipment, you don't have the budget, you don't have yeah. the editing prowess or whatever, right? And to get into a TV setting, you need those things in order to like pass the bar of quality, right? But YouTube, again, broadcast yourself. You're allowed to like upload a video, whatever it is, with whatever quality, and it gets out there, right? And and now all of a sudden, someone without decades of training in pointillism is able to get like their cool message across, right? Mm -hmm. And and I love that opportunity to open up the world to more voices in that way, right? Like you know, if it hadn't been for this medium. I would have never been able to like do theories, right? Like th yeah. that that content would never exist because I was not a trained TV producer or anything. I was just a guy who could very rudimentary like edit things together in a Photoshop and in, in like Adobe Corel Studio or whatever it was back in the day, Corel Video Studio. Um, you know, and I think modern art in a lot of ways the same way, right? Where it's like there's, I, I found a bunch of concrete and I thought I had a cool idea about concrete. And so... Here's my concrete block, and I found the best concrete block that I had, and I banged up a bunch of concrete, and here it is, and it's cool. And, you know, was it successful? Was it not? But it was, it's there. It's in the museum. That's cool. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that it, it sucks. I'm saying that <laughs> there are other ways to tell your story. Yeah. And modern art, or at least the Tate Modern, right, is a museum that's accepting of a lot of those alternative ways of telling your story. Mm -hmm. Like YouTube is an alternative way of telling your story. Uh, sure. last, last thing, uh, urinal. Urinals. Yes. Yeah, the urinal is there. Uh, so I went to the Tate Modern, when was the last time I was in, like 10 years ago, uh, when I studied abroad in, I took a like a summer abroad uh, as part of my college uh, curriculum. And I went to the Tate Modern, that was my first time there. And the thing that stood out to me, right, was this piece called Fountain, yes. which is literally a urinal in, in a case. Like laying on it, uh, laying on its back, and it's signed H. Uh, Monroe or something like that, right? And it's it's a urinal. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first went to the Tate, it was also accompanied by a basket, literally just a basketball in a display case, and that was another piece of art, right? Yes. Uh, the basketball, at least in my visit this time, I did not see it. I think it maybe it is maybe moved on to a different exhibit somewhere, but the urinal was still there. It's called Fountain. Um, so you're familiar with it, yeah, Ash? I love. 
fountain. Yeah, so tell me. Much. Tell me why you love the fountain. Um, I was introduced to it during an art history class I took in high school. Yep. Um, and everyone in my class was so pissed off about it. <laughs> yeah. And that is what made me love it mm. so much. Yeah. Because it's like, well, first of all, absurdist art, coolest concept ever sure. to me. Yeah. I love like the Dada movement. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like the joy of the fountain is seeing other people's reaction to the yeah. fountain. And watching people just get, like, so, like, over-the-top confused yeah. or upset mm-hmm. by a fountain being put on its side and yeah. signed as art. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. That's the coolest thing ever. Uh-huh. I love it. Uh-huh. Which, I guess, fits with the lore now that I think about it. It does. It fits with the lore very well. No, yeah. I, and it's interesting, too, because, again, like, this is one of those... It was interesting visiting the Tate Modern 10 years ago versus where I am now. And I think if I had, you know, going back 10 years ago, I saw that and I'm like, what is this garbage? Like, get out of here. This is not art. Like, this is stupid. Like, this is so stupid. Why is this here? Coming back now, though, and and I, and it's interesting, because, it, but it stuck with me, right? All these years, I, I'm like, that is the thing in the tape. And I hope it's still there so I can see it again. Yeah. And it was, and it was still there. And I wanted to make sure that Ali saw it because it was important for me. I'm like... I was curious to see what he would say about it being art or not, right? But it was, what I didn't expect was me going back in and understanding it this time. Mm. The 10 year, like, again, I think being on YouTube and creating these videos and existing in, like, you know, a more modern, like, media environment has made me understand what that piece is more than I did 10 years ago when I was coming from the theater world, right? Because... Huh. The, the whole impetus for this, right, is this artist who is not named H. Monroe or whatever the name is signed. Like, it is, he signed it as a different name, right? Whatever this piece is, it, it, it's to identify, like, by me as a, like, somewhat famous artist or whatever, like, by me signing this and putting it in a museum or putting it in a display case, I have selected this as special. So it was an ordinary object, and now I have changed it i've changed its essence in some way to now be selected and be identified as art because mm-hmm. i the artist have selected it and made it into art yes and it's 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 really interesting because that is in a lot of ways the essence of like you know the street artists nowadays mm-hmm. and you know you hear so much about like the banksy and, and his works of art and stuff like that like a lot of that is really stemmed out of that idea, right? Um, if you've ever seen the, the movie Exit Through the Gift Shop, which is supposed to be like the Banksy film, but it's really about this other artist called Mr. Brainwash, who it's telling like the story of his rise and how he's not really that good of an artist, but he's just mimicking everyone in the world around him. And now I'm walking around London and his stuff is hanging in, like it is the featured thing in these art stores selling for like 50,000 pounds a pop. And I'm like, did they not see Exit Through the Gift Shop? Like, that was the whole point was deconstructing that this doesn't have value. But it, it's all tied up into the NFT movement. It's all tied up into this, like, what it, no, like, what value is all depending on what other people, like, what value do you place upon this thing, you know? And so is, is anything truly valuable or not? Well, it's all depending on, like, you know, who is blessing it and kind of what other people perceive as valuable. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Props so yeah, to you. yeah, it's it was great. Um, and so walking out of it, I'm like, you know what? This is like this was the the dumbest thing that I saw the first time, and now I'm like, I get it. Like I feel like this is one of the smartest things in here. Yeah, you know. And and again, it, did it require great craftsmanship or artistry? Not really. But it was but it was interesting. Like it got you to think outside the box, and it's like I have something to say with this element, and I'm able to tell it through this medium. It's cool. It's cool. cool. Art's, art's fascinating. It's fascinating to me. Um, so anyway, uh, if you are in the London area, uh, hit up the Tate. Uh, it's right across. It's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good day because uh, you go to St. Paul's Cathedral, which is right across the way. Obviously old, very important building in, in London. Gorgeous. Go across the Millennium Bridge, which was the one that was waving in the wind that they had to re- reinforce because they kind of screwed it up the first time. And then Tate's across the way. So it's, it's a great little like day long of activities. It's amazing. Uh, speaking of art and telling a story, Mandela Catalog. Okay. Also, there's merch, but, like, that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> hey, this is going on sale tomorrow. Might be on sale today. I don't know. Back to school merch. Got really cool bags. 
they're available. I'm not saying that it's art or anything. I, did, I, had, I, I was planning on segueing and then I looked over and I saw, oh wait, there's bags. I was supposed to talk about bags. Here are bags. I will talk about them more later. You could sign it. And make it art. Catch. Okay, here we go. That was, that was, a, that was a weird toss. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Here, okay, I'm going to make this art now. What should I sign it as? I can't sign it as MatPat. Um, P H <laughs> the, the wheels. I just, the wheels are just cranking away. Like I see the machine in your brain smoking at this moment. Shermanson. Ooh, P H Shermanson. Mm -hmm. How about just P H Sherman? I like that. Okay. P H. There you go. P.H. Sherman. There it is. I've made this art. Here you go. There it is. So it's it's there. You, you can't really make it out. Great. If you can kind of focus it on there. I'm going to send this to the Tate. And they're going to lay it right next to the fountain. Yeah. This, this is can, the day that I, I, I become the next Banksy right here. Oh, you can like unzip it and then like open the flaps a little bit. Yeah. So it stands up like a triangle. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm It'll be, it'll be good. Well, we'll make sure it's displayed in an interesting way. Yeah. Maybe we'll make a book and stick the book bag inside the book. What? And then it'll be a, ba a, a, ba a book bag <laughs> by P.H. <laughs> The book okay, bag. We're, we're still ideating on the actual presentation of this thing. But anyway, um, uh, for back to school, we made these amazing bags. Uh, they're they're super awesome. Uh, they're a bit more subtle than the usual like bright green stuff, um, just because you know sometimes you want to show off your theorist pride, but not like wear giant neon green. Still has hints of it, but uh, you know it's, it blends in more with a lot of stuff. But it's really cool. It feels very futuristic, modern. Um, these are available today or tomorrow. Um, there's also cool playing cards and also uh, a Nalgene bottle so that way you can keep track of your hydration because I was it's the hottest summer on record or whatever so stay hydrated call me hydration bot stay hydrated and that'll help you actually like achievement unlock throughout because it's got little achievements on the side um hey you and I we're gonna figure out a way to give this away oh yeah totally. let's, let's figure out a giveaway Merch is available. Links uh, down below this video, hopefully, or uh, in in future installments. Uh, we'll figure out a way to. We're gonna, Ash and I are going to convene, and we'll talk about a way to give away the PH Sherman bag, so that way you can own a piece of modern art. Uh, <laughs> modern art, and then wear it on your bag, on your back. Um, Mandela catalog. So uh, when last we uh, reacted to stuff here and last analyzed it, we had done Mandela catalog three three three. Uh, which was really exciting, really uh, disturbing and scary. Uh, they immediately uploaded, uh, Alex immediately uploaded something else to follow it called Every Day Gets Brighter, which happened immediately as soon as we reacted to it. So I haven't gotten a chance to watch that. And then apparently this other thing uh, just released, uh, the old Mandela police site leak, and this actually crosses over in IRL, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there might be some puzzles for us to solve as well. So let's start with Every Day Gets Brighter. This is uh, an immediate aftermath of Volume 333. And then uh, old Mandela police site. Okay. Every day gets brighter in Mandela County. Here, here. Thoughts about the or ordeal? Stop till they've taken everything. Everything I loved. Everything I cared about is gone. I'm scared, but I can't show it. I can't show any fucking weakness, because if oh. I act human, if I act like this is fucking bothering me. Oh, man. Mature stream. Might have to censor some of this in a funny comedic way. Ooh. Okay, I could do, I could do the boyfriend. Beep. <laughs> Beep. You can. Yeah. After the fact? Yeah. You're going to do this after the fact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. They're gonna lose hope. Everyone's gonna blame me for this. Everyone doesn't know what to do. No one knows what to do. I don't know what to do. 
So this is... I'm sorry. I can't be the man everyone wants me to be. So this is following up in the aftermath of the last one where there was the alternate encounter. I'm tired. I feel like I haven't slept in so long. I feel that. And nobody knows what we're doing. Life of a YouTuber. Hashtag relatable there. And all these missing people. And they blame us for not finding them, but we don't know where the f*** they went. <laughs> so they're missing. That's that's interesting, right? So so people are actively missing, and you know I know that there were, we've been talking about kids and stuff missing in this series up to this point. Like, oh, the kids have gone missing, but it's it's interesting to hear it outright acknowledged by someone. They don't realize that we're in the same boat as they are. Yeah, no one knows. Showing the TV. That thing took something from me. I feel. It. So the fact that there are TVs talking about missing, uh, again, is is leading to the idea of like uh, the the man in the TV, right? The entity there is is the one who is scooping them up and and making them disappear. Where? Into the TV land? Into TV land? Welcome to TV land. Nick and Knight. You can watch some classic Bewitched. Different. That's scary. Seeing a perfect copy of you just walk away. <laughs> Accurate depiction. Seeing a perfect... This is a perfect copy. Back out into the world. No one's answering. No one's telling me what's going on. I'm going to kill this thing if it's the last thing I <laughs> All right, so his doppelganger is out, right? His alternate is out there. And he's going to take it down. That's cool. Oh, hold up. Did you see that? You. Is that what it said at the end? You. Was it just you or yo? Was it something? It's farmers. You. It is you. You! You! you. All right, cool. Uh... So interesting. So that's every day gets brighter. Now we move on to what the, the most recent. So I, I wasn't planning on necessarily reacting to, to just that, but now that there is an additional thing here. So abandoned Mandela police site leaked. Real. <laughs> Shocked. You will be shook it. Oh, local news. Local Little League soccer finals. Okay. All right. Support local athletics. Meerkats versus the Brighton Bunnies. Oh. Five dollar admission, jeez, five dollars to go to a youth soccer game. The scariest thing in Mandela isn't the alternates running around; it's the the fleecing of the parents going to this thing. <laughs> Inflation got that bad, huh? Right, inflation rough, man. <laughs> that was gone, jeez. Uh, support your local soccer team on July twenty first at St. John Field. Concessions not no, no concession. Hold up, you're asking me to pay admission and then you're not providing concessions where I can buy... Like, that's where your moneymaker is, man. Uh, population... De Mandela population decrease, 11 12 So we're getting dates, that's exciting. This past week, many residents of Mandela have been leaving for various reasons. Probably the fact that there's a mysterious man on the TV making their children actively disappear. Ah, it feels like a fair reason. Uh, most residents... Wait, oh, shoot. Hold up. Okay. Uh, most residents, the reason that most residents are moving to surrounding uh, counties, Bythorn, Workshaw, Yandu, living conditions, that site are living conditions. Uh, if you are sure you, I assure you, we assure you that you are 100% safe here. There's no reason to run. Who are you running from? Uh, spooky apparitions in the county. Probably those. Okay. It's also interesting. We're in uh, Wisconsin. WI, that's good to know. I don't think we've actually mentioned that. For some reason, that feels like new information. I'm, I'm sure we could have figured it out at some point, but that's good to know. Applications at front desk for age 21 and over. 6366 Hill Heaven Drive, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. only. Ask for Mr. Davis. Okay. This, this is important. It's circled in red. Okay. Oh, man, old school Gmail. Beta of Gmail. It's in beta forever. Okay. Every day gets darker. Sarah Heathcliff to Thatcher Davis, 92. Okay, Thatcher Davis. 
I know you're reading these. Answer. I'm not going to stop. Every day gets brighter, my ass. That's a reference to the last video. Every day gets brighter. Huh, weird. And that's also the the community, like, symbol, right? Like, they said, like, every day gets brighter. Well, what's what's her relation to, to Mark? What, who? The, Sarah. Sarah's relation? Sarah Heathcliff, uh, Mark Heathcliff? I don't mm, Here, look it up. Okay, okay. Here, meanwhile, I'm going to work on it. Let's see how he likes this. Let's see how he likes that. Database login. And then Bella Magazine. Sarah Heathcliff is the younger okay. sister. Okay. Okay, so this is the site then? Yes, sir. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay, can I... Zoom out a bunch. Okay. Hey! Okay. Here we go. Police Department, Mandela County. Every day gets brighter. Okay. 1832. Uh, yeah, ARG time. Uh, Mandela County Police Department in remembrance. So there's our good friend Thatcher, who is alive. And he says that he's alive. Um, is that Sarah? She's, that's the one who died or was attacked in the previous one, I believe. In the in uh, volume 333, right? Not accepting applications. Urgently hiring. Interested. Apply today. Okay, Mandela County Police Department is now recruiting faceless individuals. This could be you. Take action. Serve your community. Accepting applications. Okay, ask for Mr. Davis. So this is what we saw in the video. Okay. General information here. Okay. Mandela County Police Department. We're thrilled to have had the opportunity to serve our community since 1832. 170 years later, we still stand by the pledges that form this wonderful association. Thank you! for taking part in making this community great. As of now, emergency and non-emergency calls are answered in the Mandela County Police Station, okay? Mm, okay. You can access it. You can access it. Messages of the day, 11.15. Let's, let's finish the stuff that we can't see right now, local news. Okay, this is the Little League Soccer stuff. Brighton bunnies. Okay, I was. It's very local time thing. Okay, cool. We can look at this concession not available. Spooky apparitions in the county. This doesn't mean anything. Just some fun Halloween activities. Uh, survey concluded that most residents are moving for other to seek safer living conditions. Who are you writing from? Okay, what's this? Just inspect some of these. The metadata just come again. Spooky apparitions in the county doesn't mean anything. Okay. Anything else interesting around here? Local news. No, it's all pretty much basic coding stuff. Nothing jumping out. Okay, which means that this is the problem, right? Okay, login. Staff database. So, okay. Okay. What was it? We saw this. We saw this. There's a reason they showed us this. So we're at some point, I think once we're, as for Mr. Davis, there was nowhere to type in a, as for Mr. Davis. I mean, here's Thatcher Davis. So Thatcher Davis 92, right? That seems like a username. Wait, when we go on the line, well, Thatcher Davis 92. Um... I know you're reading these. I'm not going to stop. Every day gets brighter. Uh, so the fact that... Sarah Heathcliff to Thatcher Davis. So the fact that they have this in quotes, every day gets brighter, I feel like that's important in some way. Is that the password? I'm looking around at anything else that could, could relate. The fact that, like, this is just showing us the website. This is showing us... I, I feel like this ask for Mr. Davis, Thatcher Davis, right? So that is them signaling to us that, hey, here's the person who, who you're looking for. So here's Thatcher Davis. And then the, the password has to be here. Every day gets bright. The fact that this is in quotes makes me think that that's what it is. 
I like that his password is just like an affirmation. Right. <laughs> well, if it works, it might not. Well, and also I was going to say that's the reason why I'm kind of like, it's it's a weird every day gets brighter. Every day gets brighter. No. Thatcher Davis, what was it, 92? 92. Not 02, 92. Every day, every face day, face gets face brighter. Nope, still no. Every, hold up, maybe it's caps. Here, there's a couple things I want to try. Davis 92. I just copy and paste this every time. <laughs> um, this is going to be capital. So, like, actually what she typed in every day gets brighter. Nope. One more time. I have two more things I want to try. Every day gets brighter. I misspelled that for sure. I didn't. Okay. Let's just try this. Because that's how it's all written. If it's not this, yeah, it's not. Okay. So now, every day gets darker, I guess. I know you're reading these answer. I'm not going to stop. Every day gets brighter. Like, it feels like it's connected to that. And if it's, I've tried, I feel like I've tried most every combination that would make sense. So every day gets darker. Every gets darker. Yeah, I was going to say, let's do that. Every day gets, let's do it all as one before we get into casing. Nope. Thatcher Davis. It might be a case sensitive username. Oh, no, it might be. That's right. Shoot, I'm going to have to do it all over again, aren't I? Well, try this guy. He seems fun. Davis, and that's that's you telling me that I'm on the right track, isn't it? That your Davis ninety two every day gets darker. Ah! 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 Yeah, there it is. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that my my senses were were on the on the right path there. Okay, confidential. Yes. Oh, cool. Yes. Oh, I feel so satisfied. I feel you good myself. Uh, confidential. <laughs> Welcome, Lieutenant Thatcher Davis. Yeah, I'm reporting for duty. Active investigations. Okay. Uh, Keesler, Joseph, Murray. Media recovered. Wow. Oh, wow. We got all sorts of exciting stuff. Mark Heathcliff, Cesar Torres, and Marshall, and then 0000. Okay. Let's check this out. Huh, media recovered from case 00334. So story of nativity. So this is going back to the very first episodes of Mandela Catalog where we're seeing these Bible adventures happening mixed into the story that's being told. So this was actually something that was recovered from a specific case. Photo courtesy of David. Yes. Can I be annoying? Yes, please. Can you hit F11? Yeah, totally. 100%. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Some weird bootleg version of a copy of the Beginner's Bible. Bootleg version of the Beginner's Bible. The tape and case is official. Contents are somehow edited and the scenes are added onto the tape. Yep, okay, so this is what we see in the video. Also came from one of the tapes that Dave restored for me. Seems to be some kind of educational film geared towards young children. Okay, so this was from the most recent upload of Volume 333. Stanley, yes, yeah, I was gonna say Stanley has a striking resemblance to Limbo Puppet character name made by Jim Hansen. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we made that connection. It's been impossible to trace might of the subconscious back to any kind of production company. We'll be trying to look more into this. I have a feeling this is directly related to the case. Huh. Ooh. Yeah. So, three, three, four. Yep. Was that was that Lynn's case? Lynn. Which one? Lynn Murray. Uh, three, three, four. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. She's my voice friend. Wait, really? Yeah, at the beginning of... Because wasn't she the first one when we were watching Volume 3? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I was doing research. Good, yeah, good for you. Nice. Well done. So this is directly related to Case 334. Interesting. Okay, so so it seems like actually instead of it being like one mystery, like because the way we've been looking at Mandela Catalog, right, is that like it's one mystery all about the alternates in this world. Like we've been looking at it from a very macro standpoint about like what is really going on in this world, in this universe. But it seems like maybe it'll be beneficial as we look forward into this story more 
to look at them as individual cases and solve individual pieces, which might then lead up to who's the man, all that stuff. Huh. Okay. Sarah Heathcliff. stripped that away with your filthy hands, you absolute scumbags. Who do you think you are? Up in that mighty tower of yours. What are you going to do now? How are you going to repay me for this? I'm still waiting. Huh. Evelyn Miller witness. Oh, wow. This is terrifying. <laughs> these these mugshots are just horrific. He was always the nicest guy up until he started the investigations with Jonah. I I never believed in that kind of stuff. He always came across as a skeptic, so I'm just more surprised than anything. There was always something going on with him, but he just never told me. We got into a big fight over it, and he just told me to awful, terrible things that I just wish he had never told me. Huh. Just told me awful, terrible things. He was always the nicest guy up until he started the investigations with Jonah. Up until he started the investigations with Jonah? With Jonah or in, into Jonah? He was the nicest guy up until he started the investigations with Jonah. With Jonah, investigations with Jonah. I, I never believed in that kind of stuff. He always came across as a skeptic, so I'm just more surprised than anything. There was always something going on with him, but he just never told me. We got into a big fight over it, and he just told me some awful, terrible things that I just wish he had never told me. Huh, okay. Adam Murray. I have no idea what her issue was. She keeps making shit up about me, just on a whim. Constantly, there's always something new with her. I have no idea what she's like with other guys, or if she's had this problem with other guys in past relationships, but I, there's got to be something up with her. She tries to make me sound like I'm crazy, and I feel like I know myself enough to know that that's fucking bullshit. Like, I'm sorry for being the mentally stable one in our relationship. She's got some screws loose up there, man. BPS, uh, by Thorn, uh, Paranormal Society, uh, as a refresher, right? That's uh, from one of the previous uploads. Today would have been his 30th birthday. He had so much going for him. But you stripped that away with your filthy hands, you absolute scumbags. Who do you think you are? Up in that mighty tower of yours. What are you going to do now? How are you going to repay me for this? I'm still waiting. So really, on one hand, it's like, oh, these are all connected. But they seem like actually about very different topics, right? Like the first one is about her brother, right? Sarah, uh, Sarah talking about her brother, Mark. It would have been his 30th birthday, but we know that he, uh, you know, ends his own life because of the alternate attack and things like that. Um, meanwhile, Evelyn and Adam seem to be talking about, like, interpersonal conflict, even though Adam is also weird. Huh. Bythorn Paranormal Society. Oh, there it is. The BPS. There it is. Bythorn Paranormal Society. 389H Johnson, Heathcliff, Torres. Okay. So this is more about Mark. I need to go back and examine how a lot of these are connected because these are all active investigations, but very clearly they're all connected to in some way, right? Because the Mark Heathcliff stuff, like why is she mixed in to 0364, but Mark Heathcliff is 0432? Maybe I just don't understand how like cases are numbered, but like this seems to be connected to Sarah, and Sarah should be in here, but then the Bythorn Paranormal. I, I, that, that is news, right? I didn't know the Heathcliffs, and I think this is, this is actually new, right? We knew that Adam and Jonah, right, were connected to the Bythorn Paranormal Society in uh, whatever upload that was. So these guys, we already knew, were part of their, like, paranormal thing. 
he goes down to the basement, he sees the TV, he listens, um, all of that stuff. So the fact that Mark Heathcliff is connected to someone who is also part of the Bythorn Paranormal Society, that's, that's interesting, that's new. It's not me, it's my mom, she's knocked out cold and I have no idea why. I'm on my way to the ER, could you help me do me a favor? I need to come over and check out the cameras that we have set up. Yeah, this is the exact conversation that we have in that earlier upload that we installed after we were robbed. Okay, event yet to be investigated about them being robbed. Would you mind if I asked why? Well, she screamed really loud before I found her. Doors and windows locked. Are your doors and windows locked? Yeah, that's the weird part. She saw something, I don't know. It's not gonna switch them on, and okay. Cool. So camcorder, collected for investigation, tape found in camcorder, shadow under the door. Uh, progression of the footage. Heathcliff mutters, mutters, okay. Heathcliff arrives at the Torres residence, exit vehicle, enters house, returns after 23 seconds. Uh, Heathcliff exceedingly double the speed limit, <laughs> exceeding double the speed limit, oh no. He returns home and locks himself in the bedroom with his camcorder. Voice reminiscent of Torres calls to Heathcliff from outside the bedroom window. So this is, ex this is just listing off everything that we've seen in a previous video where Mark is trapped in his room, the alternate seems to be on the other side, it's like open up, open up, he doesn't. Following message was shown uh, using the camcorder's text display, it followed me home, Caesar. Heathcliff directs the camcorder to the bedroom door where an unidentified voice is heard speaking with Heathcliff. Yep. September 14th, 92. Okay, next day. Camcorder is positioned to face the bedroom door. Shadows are seen under the door, coinciding with sporadic knocking. Knocking continues at intervals. Uh, Heathcliff repeatedly dials numbers in mobile phone. No response is heard. So that's that's interesting. That feels like it's important. Anytime, anytime there's numbers in these sort of things, you always want to pay attention. So that's important. Uh, it continues this until 6.32. So again, like a lot of, lot of numbers. Heathcliff starts sobbing until he stops. Footage cuts out, okay? Footage resumes. Camcorder continues to face the bedroom door. Gathers his handgun in a holy Bible. Repeatedly shouts for help until the voice gives out. He physically hugs the Holy Bible, crying into it while rocking back and forth. Aggressively writes in the composition book, which I believe we've seen, right? We've seen that in a previous episode. I think it was volume 333, right? Yeah. Where he was running. Yep, and he was writing. Yep. So he aggressively writes in it. Curls up in fetal position, sobbing uncontrollably. The word please is very faintly heard. Uh, an hour after silence and stillness, he calls out to his mother and father. Interesting that they are capitalized. Wonder if that's meant to be holy in a holy sense, like a religious sense. Retrieve the handguns. He shoots multiple rounds into the door. Yeah, that's he shoots at the alternate, right? And at which point it's like, bad idea, Mark. Power goes out. Camcorder light also ceases to function. Following messages were shown using camcorder's text display. I don't want to see what's on the other side, but it's been days and nobody's come to help me. What is life really worth when all I can do is confront it all alone? Curses the perpetrator before firing another round. Okay, bad decision, Mark. There it is. It's, it's in a secondary text style. So this is, it's interesting seeing it written out in this way because very clearly they're telling us important clues, right? So first text style here is Mark. And in case you didn't notice it, here's a secondary text style, which is coming from a different person, bad decision. Obscured in the darkness, the footsteps of the perpetrator are heard approaching the recording camcorder. Perpetrator stares into the lens. Following message was shown. A secondary text style, I have a gift for you. Shown facing Heathcliff's remains over at the primary text reads, nobody came for me. Primary text, yeah, nobody came for me. This is replaced by text in the secondary text reading, and now I'm free. Huh. That's interesting. So this is saying, by him taking his own life, nobody came for me, right? This is replaced with secondary text saying, and now I'm free. So Mark taking his life ultimately frees the secondary, the alternate, in some way. It's interesting. Mervyn Marshall Law Firm! You know what they say. I don't. Actually, you, you know what they say. No? I'm not quite aware of Mervyn Marshall Law Firm. Awaiting questioning. Hmm. This feels... This feels like something we'll have to scale up or down here. Hold up. Uh, is there, is there a copy? There it is, copy image, I was just off the image. Uh, F11, let's pull up this guy. We have this from the other day. Nope. New, 
just out of curiosity. Mervyn Marshall. Someone's been watching Better Call Saul. Okay, brightness. <laughs> Nothing. What? <laughs> what? I, I just, I like how we got a better sense of his hairline. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh my now, gosh, and his hair. I, right? Wow, dude. Uh, it's pretty he's great. He's got a mane. <laughs> he's got a mane. I mean. It's flowing. <laughs> Locks for days. That's nothing. That's artifacting. You know what they say. Three, 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 three. Whenever in doubt, call Mervyn Marshall. What do they say, Mervyn Marshall? I'm just so curious what what they say. Because I don't. I don't know what they say. I'm very... I wish I did. Oh, hey. Wow, we got a full-on video. definitely something in the background like you can hear that weird background noise uh it's it, and it sounds very clearly like a like a, a sonogram or um something that you're gonna have to run through an audio filter uh in order to process and see like what the image is but there's definitely like some code or something back there that you can hear yeah it started happening to me about uh yeah, there it is. You can ago. definitely hear. It. I'd uh, I'd wake up and I would be short, right? Just <laughs> like drenched in sweat, and I would come into work, and everyone would be like, "Davis, you look like." F you hear that, right? Yeah, there's definitely something else. There's a voice in the background now too. Start happening to me about uh. Sorry about all the censoring you're gonna have to do in this episode. <coughs> a year ago, I'd uh. I'd wake up and I would be just in, like drenched in sweat and I would come into work and everyone would be like, Davis, you look like f***ing. Like, what happened to you? And I'd be like, I slept. I, I went to bed and that is why I look like shit. Answering machine? You know, that, that would happen about long enough for a while. Oh, it was too long, real. But, uh, after, More background after there. some things happened, uh, it's been happening about every night. You know, I feel like I, I can't even sleep anymore. I love that I'm not listening to it. It's really f***ing with me. I can't, I can't do anything. You know, I started drinking. You know, that knocked me out once. I think that was, that was about it. That's the only time it worked. Static? No. You know, I really... I really can't be in this position. I... I can't be in this position. I, I really, I, I need to be stronger and I can't find it within myself to do that. It's not pivoting the picture or anything anymore. This whole thing's f***ing stupid. I don't even... Yeah. Yeah, very clearly what he was saying doesn't matter as much as what is in the background there. So that's going to absolutely be one of those things that you need to audio, do some like fun audio affecting with. It seemed like there was definitely like audio pitches and uh, stuff that needs to be translated via. Uh, there's a variety of different ways to hide things in sound files, uh, whether that's like it's just visually there in 
the visualization of the like sound waves when you plug them into audacity or whatever but then there's also ones where it's like you have to run it through a processor that then kind of spits out what the code was on the other end like there's a lot of things that you can do with sound when it comes to hiding code it's pretty cool um and then the other half of it was whatever that news story was in the background right yeah uh because you could hear like the boop 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 which is i think the like newsreel kind of like turning around like four three two one and then that extended yeah and it's extended for a long time so that's and that's the sort of thing that like it takes a lot of trial and error and you you, because i also wonder if you're we're gonna have to extract the voice from that because you know it's you have him over top so i'm hoping i would assume that alex the the creator series right has made sure that like you can without having to like extract the voice you can still put that audio file in and, and get the codes that you need out of it. But um, just in case, like, we'll have to to do that a little bit separately. This is fascinating. I, I have so many questions. This is, it's, it, this is really exciting. It's okay. cool. Okay, okay. So... I don't, I don't necessarily... I, I cannot uh, promise you any answers. Well, we'll try. Okay, okay, we'll try. Well, also, do you want to show the internet Maui? Oh, I was just holding Maui. Well, just for the past few episodes, you've just been, like, whacking him on the side a little bit, and no one knows. <laughs> All right, so... My, my little cuddle. Yeah. Yeah, no, Ash Ash got Maui for, for Ollie, which is yeah. very nice. Because Ash, Ash is apparently a, uh, a Squishmallow, Squashmallow... Squishmallow connoisseur. Squishmallow connoisseur, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but which yes. I appreciate, because I, I am, a, I am a, a lover of stuffed animals. I love a good stuffed animal. Oh, yeah. So. It's important to squish. It is. <laughs> Squish, squash. Yeah, applesauce. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, please. My questions about the video. Mm-hmm. Um, one, I wonder if the audio in the background is audio that we've heard before. Maybe. It didn't sound familiar, though. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was just like maybe replaying sure. audio or keeping the TV on for yeah. whatever reason. I'm not sure. Two... Just generally about Thatcher, mm-hmm. wondering why, like, how he got out of that okay, or like, didn't right? go missing at all. You right. Know? Well, clearly he's gone missing to some extent, right? Like, oh, right. Well, because everyone, because they say like he's the website says that he's dead, right? Wasn't that what it was? Uh, rest in peace or whatever. Yeah, in remembrance in remembrance so the fact that remembrance is in quotes might not mean remembrance in the way that we think of it but yeah this to me feels like hey this is a guy who fell in duty or is no longer with us mm-hmm. in some capacity so you're right on one hand he didn't die and i am curious how he was able to to survive but the other hand here is like do they recognize that he the, the fact that remembrance is in quotes here is actually really interesting now but yeah and then isn't it in the email Sarah was like, "Hey, Thatcher, mm-hmm. uh, wake right up. answer me. Yeah, answer me." Um, right over but here. We're still hearing from him, which is so interesting to me. Right, Sarah Heathcliff to Thatcher Davis. Right, and and so what is their connection there? Because Sarah's mad about her brother, right? Her, and she's specifically mad about them in their ivory tower, ta- like you in your tower. You took so much from him. So, like, who is she talking... Is she talking about the alternates? Like, who is she talking to when she's yeah. like, you took so much, I'm waiting for you guys to pay me back? That's one of my big questions. It sounded like it's, you know, she's speaking, you know, truth to power, talk... Like, it sounds like the sort of thing that, like, she would be talking to the police department, right? Like, yeah. hey, you guys did this to it. You made him into a different person. You killed him, whatever. I- I'm, w- I'm waiting for some sort of response. And you see her here... I know you're reading these. Answer. I'm not going to stop. Every day gets brighter. I, every if every day gets brighter is the motto of the police department, right? Mm-hmm. Her saying every day gets brighter. My ass. She is against the police department, so she's mad at the police department for just their cover up of the alternate stuff. Well, because like, the police department yeah. uh, very clearly throughout the series has been very non-responsive. Like they're like, if someone calls about alternates, look the other way. Like it'll be over soon. Mm-hmm. So, like, they really seem to be ignoring the very clear problem that exists here. But, yeah. I don't... Yeah. Or so, like, maybe that's what she's mad about? Maybe. Or just, like, with Mark's case not getting closure from the police maybe. from that. Yeah. Um, because he was, like, 
Right. Again, I guess it's probably very silly of me because I don't have as much of like a full comprehension. Of course, sure. Um, but it said in that transcript that he was like dialing numbers. Yeah. No one came for him. Right. Literally no one helped. Right. And like, but the whole mother and father thing, I don't, do we even know their names of mom and dad? What in the for the Heathcliffs? No. Yeah. No. So I mean, it's like... we ba- we barely knew that. Uh, that I, if I recall right, I'd like the fact that he has a sister. We got that through a picture, like a picture of him as a kid with a sister standing next to him in front of a church. Like that was yeah. like really the most I think that we got out of. And even then, it wasn't immediately clear that oh, this is clearly Mark right. in front of a church with his sister. Like we weren't sure that like that's the best guess that you had. Interesting. There. Yeah. There's. So, obviously, this is us thinking through it in, in real time, trying to, like, uh, you know, I haven't watched the series in, in two months, right? So, it, that's one of the tricks here is there's so many names and, like, events and everything's told in, like, weird chronologies and broken up and stuff. So, I need to refresh myself on a lot of this. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. A lot of, a lot of great detail um, and clearly some new steps for where the series is going right like and i i'm wondering about that audio code that really feels like the next clue that we are meant to solve as part of this mystery because that was really the there was information but there was no clear next steps right that feels like it's solving whatever that audio thing is feels like the next step in this ARG in in this website experience, right? So I don't know if anyone's done this. I like it. It just launched a day ago or whatever. Um, so it is relatively new. I'm not sure how far people have gotten into this. If they've solved it, things like that. Um, so, but I'm I'm curious, and we're, we're going to start looking into it too with with our uh, audio guy. Uh, but, it'll be fun for him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yossi will have a ball. Yossi will have fun. Yeah. Um, but you know the real horror of this. December 7th, Christmas Parade canceled. What? Oh, no! Oh, that is a shame. That old is a shame. That. That. Well, on that The knowledge. alternates could not take this much away from us. If I were Sarah, I would be mad too. Maybe, maybe the alternates did take it. Maybe that's the reason why. Maybe that's why the Christmas Parade was canceled. You don't know. Maybe it's an alternate thing. I mean, if it's getting broadcast... Do my camcorder. <laughs> there it is. Right? Maybe the alternates want to do their parade. Yeah. Alternate parade. You know, walking down the street. Do, 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 with their little, like, stretched face. Oh, 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 oh. This, is, this is my alternate face. Clear. Oh, 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 oh. Can you do alternate trombone again? Like that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it, friends. Uh, I'm going to send this to Yossi so he can start picking around with... Uh, Yossi is our, our audio guy. He's been listening to my voice for many years at this point, and I feel so bad for him. And also, um, he does the drums. He does all the drum rolls on, now. On uh-huh. Food Theory. Yeah, he's been doing all the fun drum rolls, uh, which has been fun for him. Because <laughs> we never had a drum roll, and now he gets to make all the jokes about the drum rolls, which he's wanted to do for a long time. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to pop around with this. If we discover anything, we'll let you know. Obviously, I'm sure the Mandela Catalog subreddit is actively working on this. It probably has cracked the whole thing wide open at this point. Um... So we'll also do research over there. Uh, but yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, Mandela catalog. I thought he was taking a break for the summer. I thought the, the kind of vol- after volume 333, that was going to be it for a while. But back back in full force, which is exciting. Caught me super off guard at like 12 a.m. last night on Twitter. Yeah. I have tweet notifications on because yeah. this is my life now. And I was like, <gasps> and I have this like website up on my phone. Yeah. Super close to my face. It was, uh, a, yeah, whole, it was a whole, yeah. Alternate trombone map. Ah! <laughs> it's your screensaver now. <laughs> so, well, good. I'm glad that we were able to kind of like purge this from the to-do list. Yes. So there you go. Uh, this is super fun. I, I'm so excited to see where this goes next. I love any time that there's like a puzzles in a website and, you know, let's figure out codes from this. It's so cool. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know over on the Game Theory subreddit uh, what you find and if you have any theories of your own or down in the comments. You know, it's always a good place too. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, we'll be having... Yossi doing drum rolls and 
than exploring urinals for their relative value in art class. Uh, so with the, anyhow, without any further ado, my friends, thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya! <laughs>